Thanks for staying with us. We're going to start with the nation. Why Nigerians should vote Tinubu Shatima by Buhari. Withdrawal policy pushes up POS transaction charges. Polls threatened INEC ones. 7,000 nurses begin strike in New York City. Ex Lagos Bornu governors trustworthy. Made in Nigerian helicopter for inauguration before May 29th. Mm. Kidnappers demand 620 million naira for the 31 victims of a dual train attack. Sylvia seeks CBN special fund for modular refineries. Okay, which story are we starting with? Major headline. Yes. So um, at the Muhammadu Buhari Square in Adamawa State, um, our president raised the hands of the presidential aspirant candidate for APC, um, Ashwadi Boda Metinubu, and asked the people of Adamawa to vote for him as well as the female contestant, our first, our only female contestant, gubernatorial contestant, on, and she's um, as well. So his statement was, he, thank, he gave thanks to the people of the, because it was a very massive, well-attended campaign, and he mentioned that he was thanking them for coming out and appealed to them that he wants, I want you to, a court, I want you to vote for them massively, retain the party in power at the center, and also return Adabawa to the ranks of progressives. And he said he wanted them to buy into the message of renewed hope. He also campaigned for the gubernatorial candidate for Adamawa State saying that she's had, that he wanted the men, the women, and the youth of Adamawa State to vote for Senator Aisha Hamed Binani and saying that she's had a track record over the years of duty and service and she would improve the livelihood of the citizens of the state. And wouldn't Adamawa want to be the first person to first vote, state. first state to vote a female governor? governor. Um, I, I'm ex I want to interview. Yes, I really would love so her. excited. It'd be great to speak to yeah. her. Yeah. Okay, so I have the. Um... Go ahead. Let me let you go. Okay. I'm not sure so this is not Nigerian story. This is in New York. They said seven thousand of their nurses uh, started a strike, and this has to do with their grievances is that um, their salary and the fact that. Um, nurses positions they they wanted even more nurses positions they had had a meeting with the management side and the hospital side and they couldn't come to an agreement and they said that the strike led to a lot of you know chaos that they had to ask doctors to step in into some of the nurses role they had to stop some services some ambulance services were stopped and for me i just find it interesting that uh, yeah, strike is up that the yes <laughs> the how do we call them? What do we call them? That's Civilized? Right. The, developed, the developed world is going through um, the same issue. So obviously it seems that there's a global, for me, when I say things like this, I feel like there's a global change that's about to happen. Yeah. And they have to sit down and talk again. And the economics and of the world is changing. And will never tell us, oh, there are issues in their countries. They just say, in like that country. <laughs> you know, they never <laughs> remind us that they also have these issues. Anyways, our president, no, not our president, the executive vice chairman and chief executive officer, of Naseni, that's a national agency for science and engineering infrastructure, Professor Mohammed Sani Harun, has yesterday said that they are going to be creating, establishing three industrial park parks across Nigeria. They're going to have in Newi, in Anambra State, Oshogbo, Oshun State, and in Igabi, Kaduna State. Now, these industrial parks will be automotive, sector, automotive um, sectors in the three zones, and they're going to be also going to be. Um, the creation, the establishment of the very first helicopter in Nigeria. The agency said that um, they will inaugurate made in Nigeria helicopters in Kaduna before the president leaves office May 29th. Well, we'll see how that goes. I'm pretty excited because even the, um, the governor of Kaduna State was able to give them 50 hectares of land and um, to be able to create this industrial park mm -hmm. and across the country. And I'm really happy about that. That's, that's, that's good news in yeah. State and Newi in Anambra State. Any other story in Nation? Let's move on quickly now. You have a story okay. in Nation? No, just the INEC have, have warned about the polls that they might be um, postponed or cancelled. Um, they're just saying in, in some flashpoint areas that... Um, insecurity? They're, they're, yeah. Insecurity, yeah. Yeah, the what? insecurity may cause... So um, we should start, I mean, working to work towards... Um, Securing the nation so that the elections can hold. hold. Okay, yeah. moving on quickly to the punch. Cash limits, customers protest as banks begin enforcement. 
picture here of how Yoruba nation protesters converged mm. at 3 a.m. Members killed. Pastor raped my daughter for three years, says mother. Oh my God. Protesting police students blocked Ibadan Road. Governors intervened. DSS director's wife orders Kano governor candidates arrested. Dr. C, UK police deep in probe controversy surrounding airport incident. Gunmen demand 620 million naira ransom for abducted train passengers. And scarcity, FG orders NNPC to reduce petrol price. Okay, um, which story are we starting yeah. with? We can, I can start with the Yoruba Nation. Which one? Oh, no, I was going to start with the DSS's Go ahead. wife. Well, apparently there was this in um, the N NNPP, N N yeah, NNPP candidate, gov yeah. gubernatorial candidate, was going, um, had landed the Amino Kano airport and then his motorcade was causing traffic and yeah. she was coming in her own motorcade behind and she was like, ah, what is causing this traffic? So, of course, there was an altercation. Everybody started okay. jabbing them. Everybody was showing power. Ah, yeah. oh, well, you can't do this, you can't do that. That's how she now said that they should arrest. Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> the <laughs> gubernator, um, his name is um, Abba Yusuf. So he was arrested. When they called the um, hmm. spokespeople power, of the NMPP, yeah. the, the, the guy didn't pick up the His phone was off. Oh, yeah. But the DSS yes, said, oh, yes, that there was an arrest, but because it was a breach of peace and a breach of uh, security. Mm. And he has been kept in custody. Mm. So we are not sure whether it was the DSS wife or, or showing power or, or where well, he's in custody, Sha. <laughs> okay, so let me talk about what happened yesterday in Ojota. So according to reports from Punch, Yoruba Nation agitators had come to Ojota about 3 a.m. Mm. In, 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 in the various buses, and nobody knew what was going on until about 7, 8 a.m. where they started coming out to protest. Uh, according to bicycles and a tricycle, tri um, tricycle driver saying that there was a woman police specifically who was not dressed in police uniform who got a call. And it was after she got that call, she then instructed the police to disperse, disperse the protesters with tear gas. Um, according to the reports, also, the protesters had kerosene wrapped around their, um, maybe used to cover their eyes so they couldn't, the, gas, the tear gas wasn't affecting them. Some they, they also said that the bullets couldn't penetrate. I'm not sure what that means. Said that the, the protesters, the policemen's bullets couldn't penetrate. But at some point, two of, their, of the protesters actually got killed. And um, the police is saying that their own men were also attacked. About mm. two of them were, thrown, were taken to the hospital because they had cutlasses, they were macheted, and also um, shot at. Um, there are various questions that have been, the investigation is ongoing to know exactly what happened. Some are asking that the, 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 the protesters get approval to use, to protest. You know, how, when, you have, when you want to protest, you have to get some kind of security or inform the police or the authorities they're going to protest. That's one. Well, at what point did the police start attacking? Was there, um, did the protesters fire at the police? So these are questions we need to investigate and find out what happened, what to the, that caused the death of two people at that protest. And we hope that the investigations can come soon and we can know exactly what happened. Okay, so that's the yes. headline, um, cash limits. So customers have now, it started yesterday, where customers cannot withdraw above a specific limit without paying fines. Um, before it was meant to be 100,000 for individuals and 500,000 for um, co corporate organizations, but it was reviewed to 500,000 for individuals and 5 million naira <laughs> to corporate organizations yeah. based on pressure. But the CBNs, the people went to the bank and they are complaining that for companies that do a cash based business, this is really affecting them. Um, they, they said that they, they face severe oppositions from banks that no long queues within the banking hall because. People did not understand why their withdrawal should cost them additional money to execute. So Punch interviewed a few customers and there were complaints from some people. <coughs> some felt like they mentioned their banks, their banks are so um, IT forward that they've always been cashless, but that they feel bad for, for people who, whose business is cash dependent and who are not in developed areas who would have to be spending more money to access cash that they need. So, mm. um, but... This is the um, CBN is not going to change the policy anytime soon, and we're waiting to see how that will pan out. Yeah. Also, there were complaints that CBN does not have, has not put in new notes at the ATMs, yeah. but <clears throat> um, um, Punch visited several of them and confirmed that CBN said they've put in new notes. Punch visited banks and they confirmed that they were still dispensing 
old, old notes. notes. All right, let's go on a break. When we come back, we continue with our reviews. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still reviewing Punch. Here's the story. Yes, yeah, so um, <coughs> we had heard a few days ago that um, Chief Dr. C was arrested at Heathrow Airport um, on Sunday. And then after a few hours, he was let go. And um, further information is that he was arrested on allegation of rape that happened in August 2019. And... Um, there was an email sent by the punch to the Met Police and they said that um, there's a 71-year-old man that's been um, investigated over the case of alleged rape in 2019, but it's not in their, you know, style to give, a certain, to give the person's name until they've been properly charged. They say, yes, he's been arrested and investigations are going on. And so um, he was in the UK at the same time as the flag bearer for presidential for the PDP, you know, the, he, um, Atiku Abubakar has just been invited to come and speak in the, um, in the UK just as Peter Obi and Ashiwaju were invited. And so he was, you know, in the same group of people who had traveled there when this arrest was made. I'm quite pained about this, um, this pastor that raped the daughter. So what happened was that um, a witness, the, the pastor's name is Pastor Chris McDonald's. No, McDouglas. McDouglas. Yes, Chris McDouglas. He actually allegedly raped a 70-year-old girl from 2017 to 2020. Um, the case came up in court, and um, the director of public prosecutions, Dr. Babajide, was telling the court that this man um, had always taken the child, saying he's taken her for gospel ministration. Wow. The mother actually said that the pastor used to come to her house and say we're taking the daughter for choir practice or to come and learn how to minister. Not knowing and, that and, and she got moody, the girl got moody. The girl really got how old was it? You know? 17 years old. Oh, she's 17. That means it started when she was 14. She's 17 now. Yeah. And for the past she's, three years. Because she's been doing it for three years. And, I need and to mention the name when, of the when they When they um, confronted him, he said, oh, that it was That's the, the devil. That's the name of the pastor. Yeah. It was as the usual. Devil. It okay. was the devil that... Um, I didn't get as usual. So, yeah. the, but luckily, I think the mother had taped his confession. Okay. Oh. Yeah, so that's her own evidence. Against that's how smart. Because now he's uh, saying Denying he's Because he actually said not guilty. So yeah. maybe that's what, that's what that evidence comes into play. Daily Sun, okay, INEC fears selection shift over insecurity. Article campaign council dismisses allegation of money laundering. One dead policeman shot as Yoruba nation rally turns bloody in Lagos. I will be responsible as president, says Peter B. Wiki explains anger with PDP. Fuel importation to end by 2024, says federal government. And appeal court president warns election tribunals members vow to deal with anyone found wanting. Okay, which story are we doing in So Atiku's campaign um, for his president, for the, has, um, is responding to an allegation by his former okay. aide, former media aide called Michael Achimogu. Um, he, Achimogu had... Um, was appointed media director for the article support organization and this was done in um, 2021 but then he re he released a video on his youtube channel that um, alleges that um, article was m mentioned that some of the monies that were gotten you know was by corrupt means he found a way to channel them through uh, what they call special purpose vehicles so these are companies that um, these are shell companies in order to hide the fact that these monies that have come in and were not gotten by legal means. And um, his, the article um, campaign team is responding to it, he's saying it's just lies, and that um, it, was, it was specifically Dino Melai that was speaking on behalf of the um, article Abubakar, saying that he doesn't even have time to talk to all these small, small 419 Yahoo boys. He has, you know, there's no truth to what he said. And also there's nowhere where this Achimogu was um, appointed media aide. Anyway, in response to that, um, Achimogu posted copies of his 2021 appointment letter by the articles, you know, as articles media aide. So I guess we would see further, we will hear yeah. further where this goes. More on politics, Peter Obi was in Delta State. He's saying that he will be responsible as president. He told the people, and I think um, Deacon Chris, um, Yoyu, popular, popular industrially, also assured his, um, his members who all came to support. It was a town hall meeting they had in Delta State. He said, no tribe buys bread cheaper, no religion buys bread cheaper. 
He said he's going to urge supporters to vote the candidate and make uh, because he has the capacity to lead. He also said they would make education work, no more strike in all the public facilities. They will ensure that there is law and order, no more harassment by police because they would train them to work. He said they are they are friends and not our enemies. And they also promised that the war reports would work once he becomes president. And uh, Wiki has said that he's angry with PDP because they, uh, the, where they chose the president, what do you call it? The chairman, uh, the IU, Senator IU. No, no, he says the election was fraught with fraudulence. Yes. He says that um, if it's not that he loves PDP, he would have taken PDP to court. But he loves the party. Any other story in son? Let's move on quickly to the Nigerian Tribune. Which story is catching our attention? Security threat to next election. Real, says INEC. Fuel importation to end by 2024, says federal government. Mm. New Naira notes now in ATM as cash withdrawal limits take off. Why we queried Ebira, traditional ruler, says COVID government. 13.1 billion Naira bid. For forfeited Ikoyi property fails. Hmm. Hajj, Saudi confirms 95,000 slots for Nigeria. Gunmen kidnap customary courts present in Edo. Six train kidnap victims rescued. Federal government is projecting that by um, 2024, it's the first quarter, um, Nigeria will put an end to the importation of petroleum products into the country. Um, the Minister of State of uh, Petroleum Resources, Timmy Pre Silva, said that. Um, uh, because of the rehabilitation of the Portacol refinery will and also uh, will be partly completed at that time, while also the 650,000 barrel per day capacity Dangote um, refinery will also be on stream and also uh, modular refineries would have taken off. So all these put together would be able to, you know, um, take care of our supply and demand needs in, in the country. Mm. So That's great news. Yeah. So, I mean... Once they it's still, it's, we're we're just, <coughs> what, this we're is just we're projecting permutation. Well, we're projecting. It's, yeah, we're projecting based on non-government policies, but individual private organizations with the hope that they actually work out. I won't take the story of the 13 billion. We are optimistic, Murayo. I am a fellow optimist. <laughs> I have businesses in Nigeria. Nigeria must yes. work. So um, the EFCC has been working, and um, in the paper here, um, the secretary to the commission applauds the. Um, head of the commission for his transparency and his bid to be even more transparent in the bid to sell forfeited property. So they have some properties in Lekki, Banana Island, a block of flat, 24 unit luxury flat that was seized. And they were trying to sell this at auction. And there's supposed to be like a closed bid where everyone would bid for this 13.1 billion naira property and they're supposed to drop 10%. But the only person who, who, who placed a bid on this property did not drop. The ten percent, and that's why the persons B could not go. They had also lot two and lot three other properties as well that they didn't get enough. Who has that kind of money? So if anybody, I, I said it in my Instagram live yesterday, teaching that opportunities will come in 2023. That only people who have saved or have car access to cash can take advantage. This is a good business opportunity that only those that have cash should take advantage and be. This is transparent. Don't go and complain that EFCC is selling property without you being knowing. Now you can join Who the Who are these people that have this cash? Okay, we have to. We will join That's them. That's what we can take on front page reviews.